In this lesson, we're going to be graphing linear equations in standard form. The success criteria is, I can rewrite the standard form of a linear equation in slope-intercept form. I can find intercepts of linear equations written in standard form. And I can use intercepts to graph linear equations. The standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by equals c, where a and b are not both zero. One of these could be zero, but not both of them, okay? A and B can both be positive or negative, okay? And C can be positive or negative or zero, okay? Uh, and this plus would turn into a negative, and we'll see some examples coming up. In this example, I wanna graph the equation negative two X plus three Y equals negative six. Well, the way I'm gonna do this one is I'm actually gonna convert this standard form equation into slope-intercept form. If you remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So all I need to do to this standard form equation is solve for y, okay, and get it into that slope-intercept form, and then I'm gonna graph it, okay? Well, I'm gonna rewrite my equation. Negative 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get rid of all the other non-y terms, okay? Well, I see this negative 2x is a term that is not a y term, so I'm gonna cancel it by adding 2x on both sides. These are going to cancel. You can cross them out if you want. You don't need to. Uh, and anyway, I'm going to bring down a 3y, and that is going to equal, well, I have a negative 6 term, and I have a positive 2x term, and I always want my x term first in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to write the 2x right here, and then minus 6, because this is my 2x term, and this is my negative 6 term. Okay? Anyway, the next step to get to slope-intercept form is to cancel out the coefficient. Okay, So I have a 3 being multiplied by y, so I can divide it on both sides. And both sides means divide by every single term. So now that I've divided each term by 3, I'm going to simplify. So these cancel. So I just get y. Now this 2x over 3, I can rewrite this as 2 thirds x. And then negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So now I have successfully gotten this equation into slope-intercept form. Now I want to identify the slope and the y-intercept. My slope m is just the number that's being multiplied by x in slope-intercept form, aka when y is alone, okay, and that's 2 thirds. And I can use that on my graph. My rise over run is going to be 2 thirds. And then my y-intercept is the constant term, okay, and that's negative 2. So b is equal to negative 2. And that corresponds with the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, if you remember, now what I want to do is I want to plot this point, this y-intercept, which all I have to do is start at the origin and then just go down 2. Okay, and that is the ordered pair 0, negative 2. So I'm going to plot that right now. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in on the whole graph. And then I want to use my slope from this particular point, 0, comma, negative 2. And then I use my slope 2 over 3, my rise over run, 2 over 3, to get to my next point. Then I'll have two points, and then I can draw my line. Anyway, so I'll start here. My rise is 2, so I'll go up 2. And then my run right here is 3, so I'll go right one, two, three. And then I will put an ordered pair there. And now we have our two points, and we could draw a line through these, but I always recommend fitting as many points on the graph that we can, okay? So I've gone up to right three, but remember, I can also go down to left three, and I can go down to left three again. So I can fit that ordered pair, negative three, comma, negative four. So I'll put that in there right now. And that's all I can fit on this graph. Now I'm going to draw a line through it. So I've successfully drawn my line through these points, and now we're done with this one. For this example, we're going to graph the equation x plus 3y equals negative 3 using intercepts. Okay, And this is particularly asking for the x-intercept and the y-intercept. If you remember, the x-intercept is the value of x when y equals 0. And then the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So I'm going to write that down just very quickly. So the x-intercept is when y equals 0. I'm actually going to erase this so it doesn't look like a fraction. And then the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So all I need to do is plug in 0 for y to find the x-intercept and then plug in 0 for x to find the y-intercept. Okay? I ask my students all the time, what do we do with our Chromebooks at night? We plug them in. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y first. So now this equation becomes x plus 3 times 0 
is equal to negative three. Well, whenever you plug zero in, the term actually goes away. So I didn't even need to write this step. I could have just dropped this whole y term and then just got my x-intercept, which is x equals negative three. Okay, so that's the x-intercept, and this corresponds to the ordered pair negative three comma zero. Okay, because remember, my x value is negative three and my y value was zero. Okay, so now I'm going to plot this ordered pair negative three comma zero. That is right here. If I start at the origin, I go left three and then I don't go up or down. I'm going to plot that. Another way to remember the x-intercept is it's just the point on the line that crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where the point on the line crosses the y-axis. Anyway, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to plug in 0 for x this time. And once again, that plugging in 0 will drop that entire term out, so you don't even need to write this first step, but I'm just going to do it to show you what's happening. So I'm going to re rewrite this as 0 plus 3y equals negative 3. This just becomes 3y equals negative 3. If I divide by 3 on both sides, I get y equals negative 1. So that's my y-intercept, and that corresponds to the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 1. So I'm going to plot that on my graph. And 0, negative 1 is just right here. If I go start at the origin and go down 1, that is my ordered pair. Now we have our two points. We can draw our line. But remember, I always recommend using the slope to find as many points that will fit on your graph as possible. And if I go down 1 and right 3, I can get to this point. If I do that again, down 1, right 3, I get there, and I can fit... An another point. So that's right here. And that's all I can fit on this graph. Okay. Anyway, now I'm just going to draw a line through this. And now we've successfully graphed this equation using intercepts, and now we're done. For example 3, you have $6 to spend on apples and bananas. The equation 1.5x plus 0.6y equals 6 represents this situation, where x is the number of pounds of apples and y is the number of pounds of bananas. Graph the equation and interpret the intercepts. Well, we just went over two different ways that we can uh, graph an equation in standard form. You can either find the intercepts or convert this into slope-intercept form. Uh, for this example, I'm going to find the intercepts, but you totally could convert this into slope-intercept form and then graph as well. Anyway, remember, to find the x-intercept, that is when y is equal to 0. Okay? So to do that, I'm just going to rewrite my equation. 1.5x plus 0 0.6 times 0, because I just plugged in 0 for y, equals 6. This whole term will go away. So now I just get 1.5x equals 6. The last step is to divide by 1.5 on both sides, and I get x is equal to, well, there's two different ways that you could do this. You could just move the decimal on the top and bottom, and you get 60 over 15, which gives you 4, or anything that ends in a 0.5, and let me draw this decimal a little bit better. Uh, anything that ends in a 0.5, I could multiply by 2 to cancel out that decimal. So if I multiply this by 2, this becomes 12 over 3, and that is 4. So my x-intercept is going to be 4, which, remember, that corresponds to the ordered pair 4, 0. My x value is 4. My y value is 0. And that is this ordered pair right here, 4, 0. Okay? So I'm going to plot that. Now to find my y-intercept, that's just the value of y when x equals 0. So for y-intercept, we know that x equals 0. Right? And then I'm going to rewrite my equation again. I have 1.5 times 0 plus 0.6y equals 6. Okay, Remember, this term drops out. You don't even need to write that because you can already tell that that's going to drop out. And now I just get 0.6y equals 6. Just have to divide by 0.6. And if you can see, this is just going to be 10. If you move this over, you get 60 over 6, which gives you 10. So we know y is equal to 10 which corresponds to the ordered pair, I'll write it on the left, that is going to be 0, comma 10. So if I go back to my graph, I want to plot this ordered pair, 0, comma 10. So that's right there. Now I'm going to draw a line segment through this. And the reason I'm going to do a line segment instead of a line is because it doesn't make sense for us to go into the negatives. You can't buy a negative weight of apples or bananas here. Okay, So I'm going to draw that line segment right now. 
So now I've drawn my line segment. So the last thing I need to do is interpret the intercepts. Remember, interpret means what does that number mean in the context of the problem, all right? Well, I know that Y is the number of pounds of bananas, and I know that X is the number of pounds of apples. So this means I can buy four pounds of apples if I buy zero pounds of bananas, and then this means I can buy zero pounds of apples when I buy 10 pounds of bananas, okay? So I'm just gonna write that down, and then we'll be done. I'm just gonna rewrite four comma zero as our other intercept. I can buy four pounds of apples if I buy zero pounds of bananas. So that would be the x-intercept. And then the y-intercept's interpretation would be I can buy 10 pounds of bananas if I buy zero pounds of apples. So we've graphed this equation and we've interpreted the intercepts and now we're done.